everybody. We're back with the Chicago PowerShell Conference. And uh, next session is coming up here with Adam Bertram. Uh, you might know him by the handle Adam the Automator, adamtheautomator.com. Um, I know he's been, he's been all over the place. He's always doing uh, some massive project, doing a lot of interesting stuff out there. I've seen he blogs like crazy. And I feel like, um, you know, all the time I forget trying to do many different things with PowerShell or, or I'm having trouble with scripts. I'm always ending up on his blog because he's blogging all the time. And today Adam's going to be talking to us about Azure DevOps. So uh, I'm pretty excited about this one. So Adam, I'm just going to hand it over to you. So why don't you go ahead and uh, take it away? All right. Well, thanks Lee. Um, so let's just jump right in here. All right. So real quick about me, um, as Lee said, I go by the moniker of Adam the Automator because I hate the word manual and do anything manually. I've just been doing automation stuff forever. Um, and uh, I'm also a, uh, what is it now? Six time MVP. So I'm doing pretty good there. Mostly, as Lee said, I'm mostly on adamtheautomator.com. That's my blog where I blog and also um, here recently a lot of uh, guest authors have been putting some really great content on there. But essentially I just do a lot of writing and I like writing. Um, and um, as far as the uh, PowerShell, uh, I think since Monad or so, so I've been doing the PowerShell for a very long time. And here recently, I've been an RC car enthusiast. So if you uh, follow me on Twitter, you see some of my shenanigans that uh, myself and my wife and my kids have done with RC cars. And But they're broke, all broke at the moment, so it's an expensive habit. And then also recently, I've been getting into day trading, so stock trading and futures trading and that's if I'm not <laughs> if they're not broke I'm using RC cars but uh, if I'm not broke then I'm going to be doing some uh, stock trading so those are kind of my my hobbies I guess if you will all right so what are we going to do so this is going to be very 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 short on slide this is my last slide because um, if you if you do follow my blog I like to build projects I like to go through one piece at a time and build build something. Um, I, I, I really don't like slides at all. Uh, I probably do. I probably should do more, but essentially I just like demos and building a project you can come away with. Um, so this is what we're going to do today. So to, to demonstrate the, uh, the project we're going to build. So we are going to automate the provisioning of a, an Azure VM. And I mean, this could be anything. I just chose an Azure VM out of the ordinary. The, the purpose of this talk is to show you that um, you can generally automate anything. I really hope to give you a lot of different ideas on things of how you can build scripts um, uh, with, in this instance, with, uh, with Terraform. Oh, let me go back here. With Terraform and also with uh, the Azure CLIs. But as you'll see, uh, there's some instances to where, you know, with Terraform, uh, I wanted to do everything in Terraform initially. Um, but I came to the realization that not everything that I want to do is capable. So sometimes you'll have to use Terraform and you'll have to use the Azure CLI or um, Azure PowerShell. Either one will work. You kind of have to use these two in tandem. So we're going to be using these as tools. And then we're going to build essentially an infrastructure um, at first for, the, for a one-time build. And then we're going to build an Azure VM um, from scratch. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to build essentially all of the stuff that uh, the Azure VM needs, you know, the VNIC, the network, the subnet, the uh, um, all of this stuff, the NSG here. And we're also going to create um, even down to a storage account. So the disk and then finally we're going to create the VM. So essentially we're going to build everything from scratch that you don't have anything. We're going to do all of this on-prem. It's all going to start from um, nothing. So we're going to just start from just your, your local machine, trying to get this provision. Then eventually, once we get all this figured out, then we're going to go over to Azure Pipelines, kind of link everything together so we can have one pipeline to just to, to, print, to uh, deploy and test and do all the fun DevOpsy stuff. All right, so that was my last slide. So let me go to the demo here. Let's see if I can get this demo to work. All right, blow this up a little bit. Okay. I think we are ready. Let me clear this. All right, so first up, we're gonna be going from, we ha I have everything built in a script, it's called demo PS1. You see there's a lot of different regions 
um, have each of these broken out into different sections. So we're going to go through the demo just like how you would, you know, if you're normally building some kind of project from top to bottom. So I kind of built this in scenario. If you think about what what um, what you may have, the type of person that may do this. So a DevOps pro, maybe a sysadmin, IT pro that just needs to build some kind of tooling to automate uh, a, a simple web server in Azure. And I say it's your job to build an Azure DevOps pipeline to support the development. So maybe there is a, a type of configuration that has to happen with uh, an Azure VM and you need to be able to constantly um, keep up to date. Maybe you have developers um, developing different um, configurations and different things like that to where you can really bring all the infrastructure, um, infrastructure as code, infrastructure automation all in one so that you can make that all happen all at one time. All right, and here are a few links and also everything that I show today is going to be in this public GitHub repo and I do intend to write a blog post about this. Um, so I like to build blog posts just to follow this exactly thing. So if I don't get to it today, um, I'm going to really explain everything in detail in an upcoming blog post and that will be um, at adamtheautomator.com. So this is where we're gonna start out with. If you, uh, you wanna go out today, you can get out today and find all the files and all the information that I'll be talking about here in this GitHub repo. And since we'll be building an Azure DevOps pipeline, I've also made a public um, Azure DevOps project ahead of time. So this will be the Azure DevOps project. So you can go out to both of these now and kind of inspect and see what I've done um, while I'm going over these things. All right, here's some blog posts of mine, some resources that I use. You can get to see this in the GitHub repo. All right, before we start, there are a few things. So I don't want you to think that you can just immediately start building this project. So the first thing that you really need to do, you first have to have a few things. You have to have Terraform installed. We're gonna be using Terraform um, quite a bit in here. Um, I'm assuming you're gonna be using PowerShell Core. Windows PowerShell may work, but you know who's using Windows PowerShell these days anyway? I'm sure a lot of you guys are, unfortunately. But um, uh, yeah, so PowerShell Core, I've tested everything in PowerShell Core actually on my Mac here, uh, but it may work in Windows too. Um, the infrastructure automator GitHub repo cloned. I'm assuming you have that. That's in the uh, that's for the GitHub repo. You have a, a, a personal access token. You need a pat in your GitHub repo um, to uh, for the pipeline permission, uh, the Azure PowerShell module, and the Azure CLI installed and authenticated. So these are the few six things you'll need to to start off with if you like to follow along with this at home. Oh, warning! I have to say this. I've been mentioned. I've been told this many times. Well, tell us if it's going to cost. Yes, this will cost some Azure credits or it will cost some, I, I haven't figured out how much yet, um, but if, if you're just playing around with it, I'll even show you how to destroy everything at the end, so it won't be much. Okay, how the project will flow, how you do it. So we are going to be creating the initial infrastructure for deploying the BM, so we're gonna create the all the dependencies, the, the VNet, subnets, all the network stuff, the storage account, all this stuff, and that will all be done in Terraform. Next, we're going to build the VM. We're going to do this manually. Well, manually, we're just going to invoke all of the Terraform configuration, all the scripts. So essentially, we're just going to build everything, including the DSC configuration. We are going to be using DSC um, to uh, install IIS on an Azure web server. So we're going to do all of that stuff and also the pester test. Um, I love my pester tests, so we are going to be doing that. So all of this stuff here, this is just, we're writing the scripts, developing all the code that we need on our local machine. And then when we're done, we're gonna wrap all that stuff up and put it in an Azure pipeline um, so that you can create a really nice uh, uh, CD workflow from it. All right, moving on. First step, we're gonna build the initial infrastructure. So. I have the GitHub repo for the Infra Automator cloned um, here in my local machine. So I'm gonna be just running all this from Visual Studio Code. So we'll do this. We're gonna to go to the location of the environment, just the environment that I can set up. And you can see here that it's all uh, Terraform files. So I have the uh, configuration file, some secrets in here, and the state. I'm, I, all of the machines or all of the components and resources it's already been created, so it's Terraform is just going to, to skip over it, but it's the same general premise. It'll just take a little bit longer if you do it. So to get started, let's say you're just starting from scratch. First thing you would do is run Terraform init. That'll download all the providers that, that you need. And the providers are in here. 
So this is the Terraform configuration for the um, environment, for all of the different um, infrastructure dependencies. So we are going to build a lot of stuff with the Azure RM provider. Since we're going to be, we, I also um, built the Azure DevOps project and as much as I could in Terraform um, with uh, the Azure DevOps project, uh, I couldn't do the pipeline. There are a few things that I couldn't do. Um, so I'm not going to go down through this code one by one. I, I'll probably go down through this in a little bit more detail in a blog post, but not to bore you now. Um, I'll just go over the, uh, the general gist of the resources so we don't take too long here. Um, but we're going to create an Azure ARM resource group. So again, we're starting from scratch. We're going to put everything in um, a single resource group. So we're going to create the resource group. We're going to create the VNet for the VM and the resource group. We are going to create the subnet. And we're also even going to create the Azure automation account, everything, everything that you need. Some of these will be shared. You may have these resources created already, um, but uh, for the most part, just bare from scratch. This is meant to be a demo project. So everything goes in a single resource group. You don't have to do it that way, but um, it's presented that way just to make it easy to just kill and remove it and do it yourself anyway. Uh, let's see here. Nothing really special by here. Just an NSG, an Azure uh, uh, Network Security Group. And here is creating the service endpoint for the Azure uh, DevOps. So you'll see that um, in, in Azure DevOps, you have to have uh, different ways to authenticate. Uh, this is going to provide a way for the Azure DevOps pipeline uh, to authenticate to Azure for the various resources. So uh, Terraform has a, a nice um, Azure DevOps service endpoint Azure RM resource that we can do that for. So I'll, I'll define them there. We're even going to create the key vault. So in the key vault, um, you have various secrets. So an Azure Key Vault will provide uh, you the ability to store key value pairs. So in this instance, we're going to be storing the, uh, the VM admin username and password here. You can store anything you want, uh, but this is a good, um, good instance of uh, creating the Key Vault in Terraform. And uh, let's see, I probably should also talk about the access policy. So the access policies here, you can set these so that only certain um, uh, service connections and users can access the key vault. So in the access policies here, one of these is for me, for my account, that I can actually um, uh, go out and provision and set uh, key vault secret pairs. Um, and also this one is for the uh, get and list. This is for the pipeline itself, so we can actually download these. You'll see where um, I download those in just a minute. All right, here, this is mostly for the blog post, uh, for your reference. Um, I went through this, building this entire thing took me, I don't know, 10 hour, 12 hours, something like that, of just hit and miss. This is what I like these projects. It's just more of a trial and error, learn as you go, and this is how I really encourage everyone to learn. Um, a technology like this. This is how I do. I learn, I take notes, I comment, anything that doesn't work, I keep it in there just for resources later on if I need to. So this is kind of a scratch pad. Um, so you'll see these, I left these in here. This, these are all commented out because I had a problem one way or another, um, getting them to work um, or you know, something like that, but they're in there for reference. And then creating the Azure DevOps project, then we are, let's see, you're seeing this one, getting error, GitHub apps, what's created, I actually learned um, about this while I was doing since we're using a personal access token and we were not using a GitHub app to authenticate. Uh, we didn't need that, but I left it in there. And then we're outputting these and I will show you what that does. All right, so showing that, first off, we need to provide the uh, uh, Terraform access to um, the Azure DevOps project. And if you're not familiar, Terraform can uh, automatically look for various environment variables when it runs. In this case, I've chosen to provide the, uh, the Azure DevOps uh, personal assets access token for Terraform to use and the Azure DevOps organization. So these will be set for Terraform to use whenever it, uh, it runs. And actually, if I go back in here, it will use these. So we have this, so you notice that there's no um, authentication in here this Terraform will actually use these to make this connection um, in here. All right, so next up, we run Terraform, we run the plan. Now the Terraform plan is a way that essentially goes through, tests all the syntax for the template, make sure the state is as refreshed as you can see, and essentially just runs a test to make sure that the deployment, when it actually runs, it will run. 
So this should take a second. Yep. So zero to add, one to change. That's what I expected. There's not much to do um, at all at this point because I had already built it. The power of Terraform is it's idempotent. So you can just run it over and over and over again without any problems at all. All right, next up, let's run through the apply. This is gonna take um, uh, just a minute. I've already done it, but um, you can see here that I have a var files of secret, uh, secrets.tf vars. Now, secrets.tf vars is a way that you can store um, secrets in Terraform. And don't, don't tell anybody about this username and password, but essentially this is uh, stored in here. Terraform will look at these and then use these variables, VM admin username and VM admin password inside of the Terraform um, configuration whenever it runs. Now, I'll show you that we're not gonna be using these when we go to the pipeline. We're going to be using the key vault for that, and I'll show you why in just a minute. All right, so uh, Azure is complete, blah, 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 says it works. Okay, great, so that was really quick. Next up, here's a step where you, we can't use everything in Terraform, unfortunately. Um, there are some ways to do this. I couldn't um, figure out I don't know if there was a bug or a support or not, but there's some weird things going on with the Azure RM provider um, and Terraform, especially with the key vault and setting these secrets. But so instead of just spending time every time their time troubleshooting, I decided just to use the Azure CLI. There are some there are some instances where Terraform doesn't fully support everything that you need to do, and there will be times when you need to go to a different tool. So the Azure CLI in this instance. So this is using the Azure CLI to create two secrets for the VM admin username and the VM admin password. And I've already done that, so I'm just not even going to run this. I don't. I think yeah, Azure CLI is identified as well, so I can run these again, and it shouldn't do anything. Yep, good. So done that. All right. So now, since we will need to install the Azure DevOps extension to the Azure CLI. I've already done this, so it's not going to do much, but if you intend to manage the Azure, uh, manage Azure DevOps via the Azure CLI, you will need the extension. So this is how you would do this. And this line configures the defaults for the org. So I don't have to specify organization project, um, you know, every time this is specifies defaults. All right, next up, we will be um, installing Terraform. Uh, obviously we'll be using Terraform in the pipeline once we get there. So we do need to install the Terraform extension. Now this is a great one that I found by uh, Charles Zip. Um, this one works as intended, very simple. You can use the same thing. You can invoke Terraform via um, the, the Azure, Azure, Azure PowerShell task, uh, the PowerShell task, many different ways, but I think this one makes it the easiest. So you definitely need to get that installed. I've already installed that, so I'm not going to run it. All right, next up, we need to create the service endpoint for the GitHub, um, for the GitHub account, we need to provide Azure uh, Azure DevOps access authentication to the GitHub so we can read it. So this creates using the Azure CLI, the DevOps extension, using the service endpoint create, and this provides the URL to the GitHub repo. And let's just go ahead and do this. I think I've actually run that. So let's just assume, let's just assume that I've already did, which I have. I don't want to, you know, screw anything up here live or anything by running it again. All right, next up, we create the pipeline. So we've done all of this stuff that we ne need to do for the infrastructure. We haven't actually created the VM yet. We've just been building on the dependencies, just like you, you sort of would when you're going through a real world scenario. Then you would create the pipeline. Once we create this pipeline, then we're going to go and actually you create all the stuff that's going to go in the pipeline. So all this, all this infrastructure stuff that we have built up here that you can see in here, the project, the, um, the resource group, the subnet, we're not going to need to do that every time. So we're not going to put that in the pipeline. We need, we're going to only put the things in the pipeline that are going to be repeatable. All right, so let me find my spot again. Let's see here. All right, so here it has here you create the pipeline with the Azure CLI. Um, you know, nothing fancy going on here. We're using the service connection for GitHub, passing it that, and the repo triggering, triggering on the GitHub master branch. I put, I should tell you that uh, obviously the, uh, the pipeline will trigger off of the GitHub repo, so it will trigger off of the master branch at this time. All right, once we have the pipeline created, then I was allowing the pipeline to use the service connection. 
Now, I, I, did, I did try this out in Terraform, which you can see this is impossible in Terraform. I tried, uh, but maybe somebody is smarter than me can figure it out. But essentially, this is uh, creates the service endpoint so that, um, so that uh, the pipeline can, let's see, I think the pipeline can access the key vault. Um, yeah, there's like three different ones. There's one where the pipeline needs to access the resource, needs to authenticate to the resources, the key vault, and then the GitHub. I think there's like three different service connections that you need to do, but um, they're all in here. You can um, you know, digest that at, later at your, uh, your leisure. All right, going up. Service connection created by Terraform. So inside of Terraform, I tried to get everything inside of there. So you'll see that one of these, we did create the service connection. Uh, do, 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 do. Did I create the service connection? Yes, the service endpoint Azure RM. So I did create one inside of Terraform. And this is finding what that uh, the service principal um, ID is. And then I'm providing Azure Key Vault with access to that. So I'm providing, since I wasn't able to do that in Terraform, I'm setting the Key Vault to, I'm setting that service endpoint giving that access to the key vault so the pipeline can then read from that key vault to, um, to get the, uh, the key value pairs. All right, so once we've done that, then we create the DSC configuration. So now we've gotten all of the, the infrastructure components sort of, so we've sorted out all that stuff. Now we're kind of going on to the different layer, which is um, what I call the, the VM configuration, so the OS layer stuff. So to keep things simple, I just have a very, very simple uh, DSP script that just installs the window, the IIS Windows feature. I have this here, it's very simple because I just wanna demonstrate it. Obviously here, once you kind of have this in the loop of all the different automation, you can add and remove and do whatever you need to um, in this DSC configuration. All right, once we have that done, let me close this. Then we need to upload and import the DSC configuration. This goes into um, Azure Automation, Azure State Automation State Service. It's changed in Azure, uh, but this is how you would do that with PowerShell. I am uh, importing that, sending that script up to Azure, putting that in the Azure Automation account that we had created earlier with Terraform, and then just specifying the uh, the script. So we're just essentially getting that up here, up there in um, Azure, so that we can get it applied to the uh, the VM. And then once you do that, then you always have to compile it. So you have to compile your DSC um, configs into MOF files. So this is what this does. I'm not going to run this. We've already ran that. All right, so now we have gotten all of the, um, the infrastructure components pretty much built. Uh, running all of those, all of the, the base, the one-off things, so the, the one-off tasks that you need to do, those are all built already. So. Now we need to build the VM. So this is this this is the stuff that's going to be repeatable. We're going to need to put this in the pipeline so that we can repeat this. We're thinking ahead of time that the VM configuration is going to change over and over. All of these other infrastructure components, we're just going to assume for now that those are going to stay. Um, those are going to stay the same. All right. To build the VM specific components, let's just build these for for real this time. Um, here, let me go over. I have another Terraform configuration for the VM. So again, for pretty standard Terraform configuration. I'm not doing anything fancy. To, to truth be told, I'm not a Terraform um, expert by any means. I know enough to get around. But essentially, I've created a, a Terraform config here that creates a, a public IP for the VM, a NIC for the VM, the NSG. So we put the, uh, the NIC in the NSG here. And then we create the Azure VM. Um, again, there's really nothing fancy going on here. Um, you know, I'm not going to go over each of these different attributes by any means, but essentially this is just creating a very standard generic um, Azure VM. So that's what that code does. So let's go, uh, go ahead and if we were doing this for real, we would need to download the providers for here. The providers are just Azure VM in this case for this Terraform config. Then we would run the plan just to make sure the, the configuration looks good and make sure all is fine and good in the world there. I sure hope so because I've only ran this about 20 times. Let's hope the demo gods are looking upon me. Yes, it is good. So next up, we'll run the apply. I'll just get a little crazy and run the apply and hopefully that doesn't screw anything up. <laughs> And this time you can see that we are using that var files, that secrets.tf var. You'll see this is important because you know you don't want to you don't want to um, upload or sync this to your GitHub repo 
um, and clear text. You want to really, you know, do a better job at configuration, uh, let's say, in, in that. All right, so now we're, the VM is created. I can, I should probably go over here and prove to you that the VM is created instead of just kind of taking my, my word for it. But so let's see here, resource groups, dev, playground. All right, so this is everything that I've built already. So you can see the VM, we have the VNet, the um, NSG, the automation account, everything is inside of this resource group called Dev Playground. So I am not pulling your leg, I promise it's there. This is the part that takes forever. Uh, maybe somebody knows a better way to do this, but actually getting this node, uh, this VM registered with DSC takes, I mean, 10 minutes sometimes, it takes forever. I'm not for sure what is going on there, but um, yes, this, this actually works, it just takes forever. And here, here's another one, troubleshooting for your convenience. I am uh, exposing my, my methods uh, by keeping these comments in here uh, because you, know, you get all these different errors and, I, and I, I took forever trying to figure this out. Here's even troubleshooting tips, log files via, uh, via must have internet access. After all that said and done, my VM just couldn't resolve DNS, but uh, yeah, don't tell anybody that, but uh, yeah. So this is one thing that I really recommend. If you wanna learn something, build a project from it, keep notes like this. I use these notes in a blog post later on. I will take all these notes that I have, kind of giving you a behind the scenes look at you know, one of the, how I build a blog post. And I keep all the notes that I have, whether it was working or whatever not, I keep the error messages. So we don't have to go through all that stuff again and get screenshots and all that stuff. But eventually you come, the VM must have internet access. You know, yeah, you kind of need that. But uh, yeah, learn that the hard way. Okay, next up, pester tests. So I've created some uh, basic uh, infrastructure tests. So when we first start these, um, with Pester V5, unfortunately, they don't have support for parameters yet. I hope they're eventually getting there. So I had to use uh, global variables. You could use probably script variables um, if you, you needed to in the right circumstance. But for this instance, I'm just using global variables to pass in the name of the resource group and the VM hosting, which is VS-0. And here I'm in running invoke Pester. So here's what the tests look like. And I'm not going to go down through these in any shape, form, or fashion. So, you know, we have IIS. This just does the V, oh, here we go. The um, environment, the infrastructure. So this is just the basic infrastructure. So how I built these was that I built these out by resource. I created a describe block for each of them. And then I just simply created uh, it blocks to uh, test the various attributes. So it creates the VNet with the expected name, creates the VNet with the expected address space. Subnet, you know, there's, I'm not, uh, I'm not stretching Pester's abilities any, by any shape, form, or fashion here. I'm trying to keep, you, you really should always keep your tests as simple as possible. You know, don't get, go any crazy for loops or, you know, anything like that. So I always purposely try to make my scripts or make my tests as simple as possible so that you don't actually have to go and troubleshoot and test your own tests. But yeah, so essentially this is just expecting everything, testing everything that Terraform does so we can have tests to run after that. All right, so I'm not going to run these tests because they take a little bit to run and for the sake of time, we don't want that. So, you know, you can also always just run these, um, you know, if you get them from the, the repo and um, hopefully the, I'll finish the blog post this weekend, you can run through these on your own. All right, finally, we put the pipeline all together. So we've built all of the, we've automated all of the infrastructure, all the dependencies, all the, the VM, we've, we've built everything out. And now we want to build the pipeline. To build the pipeline, it is in our GitHub repo. And the pipeline is a YAML file. And the YAML file contains everything that we did all in one, all of the, the VM specific things. We, we bunch that or you know, combine that all together and automate that um, all as one. So what I'm doing here is, here this is, tell me here. All right, so first thing, Azure Key Vault. I'm using the Azure Key Vault. I like to use the Azure Key Vault in pipelines um, to store all of the private variables, private information. So, you know, before we were using the secrets.tfrs to hold this. And I don't want to um, commit this to my, to get by any stretch of the imagination. To get around that, 
I created the Key Vault secret pairs. If you remember um, in the demo, we use the Azure, um, yeah, we use the Azure CLI to create the secrets. So these were put in the Key Vault. So now we don't need to reuse the, uh, the passwords anymore. Now that once they are in the Key Vault, we can call upon those with Azure pipelines. So the first thing we do is use this Azure Key Vault task, and we say Azure, download the Azure Key Vault secrets. So this authenticates to the Key Vault and downloads both of these. The secrets filter here downloads both of these. We download the Terraform providers. We need, we definitely need those to, um, to, to get where we need to go. Test the plan, doing exactly the same thing that we were doing before, almost to the T, except we're, we're specifying the task in YAML, how um, Azure DevOps would like them to be. And here, the command options. Here's where we provide this. So in the TFR, if they're not in TFRs, you need to specify these and the, via the command line. Here we can do dash dash var, and you can see that I'm passing the VM admin username and the VM admin password there directly on the command line when it runs instead of using TFRs. That way we can hide the, uh, the password for both of these. And then we test it and then we build it. We run the apply, exact same thing. And then running down through the Azure PowerShell, once it's built, once the VM is built and configured, we import the DSC configuration. Uh, this one is a little bit uh, uh, different. So instead of building those directly or putting the command line directly on here, um, like, I don't know if I'm actually doing that or not. Uh, no, I'm not in this instance, but um, created a, a little script called compile, compile DSC. This essentially just runs these two commands like we had before exactly the same passes and parameters, um, calls those with a PowerShell script. And I'm doing that because I tried to run those um, directly on the, um, as an inline, let's see, where's my Azure PowerShell, there we go. I, drew, I tried to run these inline, but for some reason it wasn't working. So I just put these into a script and passed the arguments to them. So Azure Automation account name and resource group name. And those two uh, variables are um, stored up here in the variables section for the, uh, the pipeline. All right, so once that's done, run the infrastructure tests. That actually goes through and runs the, uh, um, the test for uh, all the pester tests. Now, one thing that I have found, um, this isn't the first time that I, I kind of ran into this issue. For some reason, I could not get the, pe the pester Azure DevOps task to work. It, uh, I can't remember what the issue was, but I've never actually used it since. Um, I've always decided to put in a little invoke test script for me that invokes the pester test that I need to, to run. So you see here in the test folder in the repo, I have invoke test. Essentially, it just installs the pester module um, outputs with in unit. So we're gonna need in unit, uh, the in unit XML to then see, publish the results um, at the end, which you will see we need that. And there's some basic other um, information. So um, kind of a, a pester test helper, if you will, um, to just we, we can call on whatever we need to. All right, going back, and then we've got script arguments. We're passing the script file, vm.test. We're passing this one. That one runs all of the tests for the VM. And Azure Resource Group, no configuration. Oh, no, 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 no. We need to go back here. All right, uh, and then the publish. And I'll, you'll see, I'll show you what this publish does. So we've built the pipeline. Great. All right. So now the pipeline is built. We're assuming it's all built and all good. Now, what you you can, there's many different ways you can trigger this pipeline. You can trigger it with with Git. I can push a, a, a Git commit to it, or um, because I already know it's all built ahead of time, I can just run it manually by running, running AZ pipelines run the Azure CLI command. So let's hope this works. Command is in preview. Oh, one thing, the commit. The uh, whenever you create the Azure uh, pipelines, if you decide to do that with the Azure CLI. Um, it, it'll say that it's a preview command. It'll just hang and hang and hang. And what I'm talking about is, where is that one? Here. For some reason, it just hangs and hangs and hangs, and I have to hit enter a few times. I don't know if I'm in, if I'm in VS Code, um, it does that. But uh, yeah, FYI, if you, you intend to, to do that for yourself. All right, so I've kicked it off. And now let's see if, if it works, if it doesn't. Then I, I take no responsibility. Oh. oh, okay, you're gonna have to trust me in this one. How much is found? Does not have secret permission? Okay, you didn't see that. 
Look at this, look at this one. Oh, look, it works. <laughs> so, um, so you can see that this goes down. This reads the the Azure Pipelines um, YAML file. So if you're not familiar with Azure DevOps and how it works, you can create these uh, the YAML. This is all the YAML, all this stuff, and it follows the instructions of what you did. So it checks out the uh, the GitHub repo. So it downloads all the stuff that I have in my repo, downloads the Key Vault secrets so we can make those available, downloads the provider. You see, it's exactly the same process that we were running manually. Test the plan, make sure everything looks good, the, the output looks fine, builds the VM, and you can run this over and over and over again. And if you make a change, the, the beauty of this is, let's say you make a change to um, your, IA, your DSC configuration, you can add something in here, make a commit, and CI will just will kick it off automatically, and it will automatically go off, deploy the VM, run the configuration, run all the tests that it needs to. So that's the beauty of a, a CI pipeline. Um, a CI CD pipeline like this, you know, run this, import, run the tests, you know, we did all the exact sort of thing, built all of this, ran the test, published the test, I'll show you what this does in a minute, and this will, the build will fail if the test fail. Um, now, because we published the test, to finally get the, the final result of all this, you can go over here to the test tab, and now you can see that Azure DevOps had um, consumed that in-unit XML file. That's one thing that's uh, important to know whenever you're running tests um, in Azure. So you run invoke pester and make sure the output format is in-unit XML. When you do that, Azure DevOps can ingest that and provide a nice, pretty uh, interface. It'll tell you the, the tests that are passed, failed, all of that good stuff. So now that's about all I had. This is the culmination of um, me, I wanted to, because I'm really big on knowing how to build things, not just this, but how to learn about building things. I did, like I said, I did all this and maybe, I don't know, 10 hours or something off and on. You, I, I wanted, I, whenever I got this presentation, I decided, okay, I want to do this. This is what I'm going to build for this. And I just went down through one at a time, trial and error, hacking and hacking and hacking until I got this to work. Because like I said, honestly, I'm not a Terraform expert. I, uh, I know a little bit more about Azure DevOps than I do Terraform, but essentially I learned a ton just going down through all of these. And I learned lots of different things that work, lots of different things that don't. And I highly encourage you, if you'd like to learn more about this stuff, I 100% know that I skipped over some stuff that you have a question about. Always try to um, build this out on your own. Download the GitHub repo. Look at how I built the Azure uh, DevOps project and, uh, and go from there. So that's all I have. Thanks a lot for having me. I don't know, Lee, do you, do you take over now? Uh, yes, that's right. I will go ahead and take over, Adam. So actually, if you could just go ahead and stop sharing your screen for us, we'll just switch back to our kind of public hangout Zoom view. And then I think what we'll do is we will see if we have any questions in the chat. And if we don't, or if we answer them all right away, we'll just jump back to an ad break and then we'll continue on. Okay, so uh, we were monitoring the chat. I'm just pulling it up again right now. Um, I'm hearing a lot of people talking about they really like the session, um, some good stuff. They really liked uh, passing tests and things like that. Um, we, we kind of have a theme going on at the conference right now. We're kind of the afternoon. We saved a lot of the Azure kind of stuff for the afternoon. Uh, so we have some sessions on Azure Function and more Terraform, I think, even coming up later. Uh, but right now, I mean, the floor is open for chat and for Adam. So we got anything going on in chat? Mostly just praise that I'm seeing right now, but not a ton of questions. Yeah, a lot of tactile learners are uh, fighting with you. <laughs> a lot of people learn say? by, I said a lot of other tactile learners. There's the different oh, learning yeah. styles and you're clearly hands-on guy so I'll yeah no, i think the, a, a good conference whenever i go to a conference how you talk i'm like yeah that looks great i just actually just retweeted something today like you don't go to a conference to learn you go to a conference to learn what to learn <laughs> yep so so i'm hopefully inspired some people to, to download the the get get repo and, and really get started and trying to learn more about this stuff on their own yep definitely trial by error always yeah as you saw jeffrey's keynote <laughs> You just yep, went that's at what it. It's all about. Yep. You know what came to mind? Fixing and uh, trying. 
the pipelines almost look like task sequences for um, SSCM, you know, so that's could be the, the kind of the new new SSCM. Yeah, I mean, there. It, it's yeah, all weird. half one, six dozen the other. If you, I mean, if you, six the other, if you ask me, I mean, a, a pipeline is, you could think of a pipeline as a PowerShell script with a bunch of regions going down through. It's just kind of a sequence of events that it just so happens to be represented in YAML in that instance. I mean, yeah. I built kind of little, what you call pipelines in JSON, YAML, PowerShell, data files, hash tables. It really doesn't matter as long as, you know, whatever is, whatever tool you're using in the context. Yeah. Uh, so one of the questions here said, did you, did you try using the Azure DevOps Terraform pre-built tasks that let you plug in the plan, apply in, in, in it and more? Um, no, uh, let's see. I think I no, I don't believe I don't believe I was even aware of the pre-built one. I essentially just searched the de the extension marketplace and found that one, and it worked, and I went from there. <laughs> so and there may be a better way uh, to do it through that. I'm not for sure. Uh, okay, I see the other one is part of the plural site. I don't know. I'm not for sure what that one means. It's part of the yeah. plural site stuff as well. I'm not sure what that means. Uh, I do have a question for you, Adam. So a couple people in the chat throughout the session were talking about some of the like the books and things like that that you've worked on, where you've authored or co-authored. Maybe tell us about that because it sounds like people are were asking about it. They want to know what they can read up on. Oh sure. So yeah, I just put a link in the chat. Um, PowerShell for sysadmins. If you're thinking ever thinking about writing a book, never do it. That's that's my that's my uh, suggestion. But um, yeah, so that was the, uh, I've written a lot of, of eBooks. I should probably put a link in there for that, but um, not a big deal. So that's the only, the, the big print book um, that I had built actually. Here, here we go, there we, there we go. So yeah, so this one is, I don't know what, 280 pages or so. But yeah, this book, if you are, I always recommend this for more beginner I'll intermediate. So. I always say to uh, uh, start out with uh, Don Jones's um, PowerShell Month of Lunches. That's for very basic beginners. And this one is more um, just like how I presented, more project oriented where we're actually, you know, getting in, creating VMs and doing things like that. Um, it's more, it's very, very hands-on and how to apply um, PowerShell versus um, just learning PowerShell in and of itself. So I, I got to say, I had a question for you, just because one thing I noticed during your, your presentation is how tidy your code was. Are yeah. you that neat? Tidy? Tidy. You're, I didn't think that was tidy. That was my oh, chicken scratching. <laughs> I aspire to your chicken scratch, sir. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, for the most part, yeah, I, uh, uh, regions are a big thing. I, I don't use regions much in whenever I'm writing like production code, because I think if you're, if you're going to build a region, you need to create a function for it or something like that. But it's probably looks tidy just because of all the, the regions I use. I usually use those to really, when I do um, demos and presentations to, you know, to hide all the stuff that I don't need to do because I'll see a squirrel and go down a, a rabbit hole. <laughs> but thank you. Nice. All right. Well, yep. I think I think that about has it. Unless anyone from the uh, Chicago PowerShell conference crew has any other questions they want to ask, I'm not seeing anything coming in chat right now. But uh, yeah, people definitely enjoyed that session. Azure is a hot topic.